So in today's video, I'm gonna be walking you through a very simple strategy to test your business ideas in days, not months. So let's get into it. Okay, so before we get into it all, let me tell you about the first ever business that I started. It was an app called Hatcher that I started with three other friends who were all developers. And the idea behind our app was to basically help people find food and drink deals in our hometown in Wellington. And so after months of, you know, doing research, we figured that we would build a Tinder-like interface where people could basically swipe right to events that they liked, swipe left to events that they didn't like, and then basically see which friends were interested in going to the same types of events. Now, the strategy that we had for our business was simple. Step number one is build out the iOS app. Step number two, build out the Android app. Step number three is get heaps of users to start using our app. Step number four, start charging bars and restaurants to list the events on our app. And then step number five is we'll be so rich that we'll be able to retire. Now, in our minds, that sounded like a super solid game plan, and we figured that we could probably achieve all of that within six months, but ultimately, things kind of took a turn. And so, first of all, what happened was it took us way longer to build out the iOS and Android app than we initially thought it was going to take. So instead of it taking six months, it actually took us an entire year to build the first version of our platform. Then, the second thing was that as soon as we launched it to the public, we actually realized that we made some serious mistakes with some of the UX of our app, which meant we had to then rebuild parts of the app, which took another six months. Then when we launched it for a second time, we ultimately started getting a lot of traffic from users. And then we figured, okay, we're ready to now to start charging businesses to use our apps and to list the events. And when we started talking to businesses, none of them were interested in paying us. Some of them were, but most of them were not. And ultimately it led to us running out of money, and we ultimately decided to shut the entire business down after two years. Now, the main reason why I bring all of this up is because this is the exact same strategy that I see a lot of first-time founders use when they are trying to get their first SaaS idea or their first business off the ground. And ultimately, it in most cases leads to the exact same outcome as with us. And so ultimately, what I wanna do in this video is actually show you a way better, more effective way to figure out whether or not your business will work without having to invest heaps of time and money and energy into building the wrong thing. Now, the strategy that we're gonna be going over today is actually a strategy that has been used by a whole bunch of businesses, but that I initially found out about from when I saw how Dropbox was started. And essentially, in a nutshell, what they did was they created a demo video about what their product would do before the actual platform was built. And that allowed them to basically attract their target customer and to essentially build a wait list for when their product was ready for launch. Ultimately, the main goal of validating your business idea is to answer three key questions. If your product were ready for launch today, could you one, generate enough traffic to your app or website? Two, could you convert any of the traffic that you are generating into leads? And then finally, can you convert any of those leads into paying customers? Now, ideally, we want to be answering those questions before we invest heaps of time and money into building out an entire platform. And the way that we can do that without building out our entire platform is by following the following steps. Step number one is build a marketing page for your platform. So simply create a one pager that describes what your business is about. This is essentially going to serve as the pitch deck for potential customers. As soon as we have our landing page up and running, we can start driving traffic to that page and we can then start measuring first of all whether or not certain marketing channels that we were going to use work and how people resonate with it. The second step is that as soon as we start attracting traffic to our site, we want to then convert that traffic into leads. Now, depending on what it is that you're working on, that might look differently. If you wanna keep things super simple, you can just add an email capture where you can basically tell people that you will notify them as soon as the platform is live. But if you are building something like a telemarketplace, you might be able to drive them to a page where they can then basically sit Admit to you what kind of talent they are looking for. And then uh, finally, once you have generated a list of leads, what we want to do is ideally get on calls with them and then actually figure out what problems they're trying to solve. And if possible, we will try and help them manually before we build out our entire platform. 
Now, the specific example that I'm gonna be walking you through today is how I would validate a talent marketplace for law firms and legal departments to find remote legal professionals. There are a lot of different niches for talent marketplaces and so this will ultimately be how you could do this but just keep in mind that you can use the exact same strategies for whatever it is that you're trying to work on now before i get into it i want to quickly also tell you about a free workshop that i have on my website where i basically show you how you can get your marketplace business idea off the ground. Uh, it's a roughly 65 minute workshop where I will talk you through how to figure out your niche, how to validate your marketplace idea, how to build your MVP, and then finally how you can scale your MVP. It's designed for anyone who doesn't come from a non-coding background and would ideally like to build a marketplace business or a directory business. So just if you're interested, head on over to the site, fill out the contact form, and you'll get access to the entire workshop for free. Okay, so let's get straight into the weeds of it. Um, first of all, the tool that I use in order to create my website is Webflow, and I also use uh, Reloom components to speed up the process for generating my landing page. And so what I've done is I've created a whole bunch of templates uh, for different types of landing pages for different types of businesses. And then ultimately what I do is I import them into my project and then style it, add the copy and we're good to go. But let's quickly go over what information I would have on my landing page. First of all, um, you wanna start off with the hero section where you basically describe what it is that you do, who you do it for. If you have a product image or a product video, now's the time to add it into the hero section so you can kind of illustrate what your platform's all about. And then ideally what you want to do is you want to think of a particular target customer and you want to speak to what you think the ideal world for them would look like in regards to the problem that you're solving. You also want to uh, highlight potential roadblocks that people have, and then you want to explain how your platform and the features on your platform solve those problems. So it's a simple uh, strategy where you basically highlight one particular situation that someone is striving for, the current situation that they're in that might be stopping them from achieving that, and then how what you're doing closes that gap. Then I also add a section where I describe exactly how my platform works. And so depending on how many steps you have, you can just describe step one, two, three, and four. And then you also wanna talk about, you know, how your customers' lives will be different once they start using your platform. So, you know, not rocket science, classic landing page stuff. I also like to add a frequently asked question section to add any uh, answers to objections that people might have or concerns that people might have. But ultimately, a structure like this is all you need in order to get started. Now, in my particular example, I'm working on a talent marketplace for law firms. So once I've imported my Reloom component, what I typically do is I jump into Canva, create a basic logo, which is not particularly important. I pick out some fonts and some colors, and then I just simply start updating the copy on my website. And so this is what this version looked like. So it basically says, we help law firms and legal departments find top remote legal professionals. And then again, I go into what is the best way to do certain things? You know, what are the challenges that they have? And then, uh, you know, how does it all work? Then I have, you know, the outcomes that we create and then also a frequently asked question section. And so ideally this can be set up within the matter of an hour. You know, if you are brand new to working with these particular tools, it might take you a day or two, but ultimately you don't want to overcomplicate this. You essentially just want to uh, speak to your target customer. And I honestly use tools like ChatGPT to create the first version of my draft and then I make whatever adjustments I need. But ultimately all you need in order to get started is this one pager. Now, the second part of it is that once we drive traffic to that page, we actually want them to take action. And this is gonna be very dependent on what it is that you're working on. But in my particular case, what I might want people to do is to tell me what kind of remote legal professionals they're looking for. So all we need to do is to now create a contact page. And so in my case, it's a page where a potential customer can fill out their contact details and tell me what it is that they're looking for. So typically I wanna ask for information like their first name, last name, email, phone number, what company they're in, how they found out about us, their location, budget, and also, like I said, 
the role that they're trying to hire for. Now you can adapt this to whatever uh, you want, but ideally you want to use this one to kind of collect information about potential customers. Um, but you also want it to be short enough that they will actually take action. You don't want to ask them like 50 questions on there because that essentially becomes a barrier. But ultimately, once they go through the process of filling out this form, what we want to do is we want to redirect them to a page where they can schedule a call with us. Now, my goal throughout this validation process is not just to collect email addresses and phone numbers. I actually want to start helping people immediately. And so I want to reduce the barriers for them to be able to start getting in touch with me. So as soon as they fill out the form, they get redirected to my book a call page. And from in here, they can actually just book a 20 minute call into my calendar. And as soon as I jump on the call with them, that is where I start to find out a little bit more about the customer, what it is that they're trying to do, what's worked, what hasn't worked, and then ideally what I wanna do is I wanna present an offer to help them. Now, a lesson that I feel like I learned way too late is that ultimately, if your customer has a big enough problem that they need solved, then they don't care how you solve it just as long as you do solve it. So oftentimes people think that you can only help your customers once your platform is built, but ultimately your customer doesn't really care whether you have a marketplace platform that solves that problem for them or whether you do it for them manually. And so ideally you want to validate whether or not the problem is big enough by actually just offering to do it for them manually. And so the way that it would work out on the call is once we've gone through the problem of what they're trying to achieve, why they are unable to achieve it right now, I would make an offer to solve it for them for a certain amount of money. So the way I would typically approach it is say, hey, okay, given that you're looking for a document reviewer in Toronto, I have an access to a bunch of legal talent that might be able to help you with this. I can help you go through that process of finding candidates. Typically, I charge X amount of dollars for it, but because we're just getting this thing off the ground, I'd be happy to do it half price if you could also give us a testimonial that we can add to our website once we're done. You can also say that, look, and if we don't find you anyone, we will obviously refund you and it won't cost you a thing. And what that will do is it will help you understand whether or not the problem is big enough for your customers in order to want to pay you right then and there. And as soon as you get the answer to that particular question, you are going to know that if people are willing to pay for this particular problem now, they will likely want to also be able to pay for the solution to their problems once your platform is built. Now, the way I look at SaaS platforms or you know automated businesses now is that they are just tools and mechanisms that allow you to do these one-on-one -on -one interactions that you'll have with your customers at scale. Because at a certain point, there'll only be so many calls that you can take with someone, but having them built out an automated system around what it is that you're doing actually will allow you to take on way more customers that you could buy yourself. However, it all starts by doing this manually because one, you'll get a really good understanding of who your customers, the problems that they have, and that will essentially one, guide you with how you communicate through your landing page. And also it will help you understand the actual process that you would have to go through in order to help them find the right people or to fulfill the promise of your platform and by understanding how you would do it manually it actually puts you in a position where you'll be able to then use no code tools to automate out all of those workflows and processes so in short if you're sitting there right now with a business idea that you're trying to get off the ground and you're not quite sure where to get started Super simple, create a landing page for your business idea so you can start pitching it to potential customers. Two, create a way for those customers to potentially get in touch with you. And then three, ideally you want to jump on as many calls with potential customers as possible so you can learn more about them so that you can then figure out how your messaging can be improved and how your product should be built. If you can answer all of those three questions, you're gonna put yourself in a way better spot when it comes to actually building and getting a platform off the ground and ultimately turning it into something that works. Now, also the last thing that I wanna end on is, you know, how do you know whether or not it's time to start building your MVP or whether or not your business idea is validated? 
ultimately everyone's going to take a different approach to this um, sometimes you know you just want to figure out whether or not marketing channels will work so the first thing that I would start doing is experimenting with different marketing channels so you know uh, try Facebook ads try LinkedIn start posting stuff on Twitter maybe do a little bit of YouTube stuff and see what channels generate most traffic so that when you then launch your platform you know exactly what will work the second thing is you kind of want to see how many of the calls that you take convert into paying customers because that will give you a really good indicator as to how big a particular problem is. Typically, I personally think, you know, I look at like anything between 15 to 25% in terms of conversions. Um, if it's lower than that, it's typically an indicator that your uh, prices are either too high or the problem is just not big enough for them to want to solve it and then from there you basically work your way back so if you can convert 20 percent of people who schedule calls with you into paying customers then how many leads does it take in order to schedule a call and so if that is again out of every 10 leads you get one call then you can work your way back to how much traffic do i need to generate in order to create 10 leads and so ultimately you'll be able to see how much money and time you have to invest in generating traffic and what the ultimately what the revenue is that you'll make out of it and from there it's just a matter of figuring out can I scale this up and you know uh, what process can I automate but with that being said you also don't really need to overcomplicate the thing build your landing page get it out to people and then you'll kind of figure out things as you go so hopefully this video was useful if there are any questions or follow-ups on this please let me know in the comments down below other than that I'll see you back here for the next one bye